Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where we explore the wonderful world of creative journaling. My name is Marissa. Today, I'm excited to share a fun and easy project with you, a DIY junk journal. So whether you're a seasoned journaler or just starting out, creating your own junk journal is a fantastic way to express your creativity and make something truly unique. So let's dive in. First things first, what exactly is a junk journal? Well, a junk journal is a handmade book created from a mix of found and recycled materials. It's perfect for journaling, scrapbooking, or just as a beautiful keepsake. The best part, there are no rules. You can use anything and everything to create your pages. I started junk journaling after watching some YouTube videos. They got me curious and challenged at the same time. I wondered, how could I make use of a page from a magazine with beautiful illustrations but with full text on it? Or how can I recycle scrap papers? I have several scrap papers and magazines at home that are already read and just collecting dust. So that curiosity led me to try it out and I fell in love with the process. I was initially hesitant to cut up a magazine with such beautiful illustrations, thinking it would be a waste. But then I thought about how much more I would enjoy if it was part of something I created. I imagined the joy of flipping through my own handmade journal and seeing those beautiful illustrations to one of the pages. It felt so satisfying to give new life to supplies, transforming it from something that was just sitting on a shelf to a cherished part of my creative expression. I've created several junk journals of different themes like botanical, vintage, etc. So if you want to see how I use my junk journals, I've made a separate video about it. You can find the link in the description box below. Let's start by gathering our materials.
The size of the junk journal we'll be making today is, is a traveler's notebook standard size. I chose this size because I currently use my Chic Sparrow Traveler's Notebook to house all my creative journals, which includes my junk journal insert. Plus, I've received questions from viewers asking if I have a video making one. So here it is. The size is not only practical, but also allows for easy integration into existing Traveler's Notebook systems. Now that we have our materials, let's create the pages for our junk journal. Start by selecting a mix of papers. I don't like my junk journal to be too thick because binding will be difficult and it will get thicker later on as I add more stuff to it. So I've chosen 16 papers with different types, some with illustration, some with text, some unruled, and some lined. I also chose papers of different sizes for a more eclectic look. Fold each piece in half to form your pages. Arrange the pages in a way that pleases you. I like placing a paper with designs or prints like a magazine page next to a blank paper. This not only creates visual interest but also provides a balance between busy and calm elements on each print, making it easier to add my own touches later. Remember, the more variety, the better. Next, using a paper cutter and steel ruler, I'll cut a folder for the cover to a standard traveler's notebook insert size. If you currently own a TN insert, just use it as a reference, marking the folder in the corners with a pencil where you plan to cut it. But if you don't have a TN insert, the size is 11cm in width by 21cm in length. Afterwards, place the papers you've arranged inside the cut folder. Then trim them to the size of the cover. Now, we're ready to bind them together. 
there are a few ways to do it. You can use a notebook stapler if you have one or if you're in a hurry. A notebook stapler has a deeper reach, allowing you to staple in the middle of the pages. While an ordinary stapler has a shorter reach and is typically used for stapling closer to the edge. Or you can use a simple three-hole pamphlet stitch with a needle and thread. So today, I'll show you the pamphlet stitch. First, open the notebook to the middle part. Place bulldog paper clips to hold the paper on both sides. At the middle part, mark the center with a pencil. Since the length of our notebook is 21 cm, mark at 10.5 cm. Then mark 2.5 cm from each end. Next, let's put the holes. I find it easier to create the holes using an owl, so it's a good idea to buy one if you're planning to make your own notebook. As you can see here, I'm carefully making holes using the owl. To stitch, you can use wax thread if you have one, but the thick thread like a crochet thread works just fine too. Thread your thick needle with the chosen thread and start by inserting your needle from the inside through the middle hole. Next, bring the needle up through the bottom hole from the outside. Then go to the top hole coming up from the outside. Finally, bring the needle back through the middle hole, ensuring both ends of the thread are inside the journal. Tie a knot in the center to secure the binding and trim any excess thread. There you have it, your pages are now securely bound into the cover. <music> Lastly, let's add some final touches to our junk journal. You can tuck in tags, create pockets with envelopes, or add little bits of ephemera throughout the pages. These little details make your journal even more special and personal. Here, I have a scrap envelope that we can use. Since the size is too long, I'll trim it to fit the journal, then create a pocket.
Next, I'll be decorating the pocket using a strip of scrap paper we've used earlier. This ties the pocket in with the rest of the journal and adds a cohesive look. Inside the pocket, you can insert a tag. Tags are great for adding notes, quotes, or little mementos. They also add an interactive element to your journal, making it even more fun to flip through. These final touches not only enhance the visual appeal of your junk journal, but also provides additional spaces for creativity and personalization. Remember, there are no rules, just let your imagination guide you. With your pages bound, it's time to decorate the cover. This is where you can really let your creativity shine. Use ephemera, label stickers, stamps, fabric, buttons, or anything else you like to make your cover unique. I'll show you how I like to decorate mine. I like to use the remaining scraps we've used earlier. Not only does this create a cohesive look, but it also helps reduce waste. For example, this printed yellow paper packaging from Scribe, a which is a local stationery store here in the Philippines, adds a pop of color. Next, let's use these other strips of scrap papers to create a collage. This method allows you to blend different patterns and textures, adding depth and interest to your cover. a personalized title, I'll use alphabet wooden stamps to stamp junk journal on the cover. Stamping gives a charming handcrafted feel to your journal. For a final touch, I'll use the light green strip of scrap paper. This is where I can put the dates covered after filling up the notebook. It not only adds a functional element, but also an additional layer of visual interest. And there you have it, your unique junctional cover is complete. The combination of different materials and textures makes it truly one of a kind reflecting your personal style and creativity. I hope you enjoy the step-by-step -step guide and feel inspired to create your own. Now, I'd like to know, how do you plan to use your junk journal once it's finished? Share your answers in the comments section below. And be sure to check out my junk journal playlist for more inspiration and tutorials. Thanks for watching and happy journaling! Thank you.